gentlemen, please welcome the host of Funny Not Famous, James Yon. Come on. <laughs> That feels good. It's like being at home with my wife. Even if you fake it, I don't care. Thank you. Take it, man. I feel good. I'm glad to see I'm not the only man that wore leather pants tonight. Yes. But I'm 300 pounds. I move too quick. It's going to smell like bacon in a second. When did I famous, man? I feel good. I'm in a great mood, by the way, because I'm celebrating. I want to share with everybody what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating 29 years. That's right. A marriage right now. 29. Yes. Thank you. And I'm not one of those comedians that makes fun of being married. No, I tell you the truth about marriage. I'm going to tell you right now, after 29 years, I am still in love. Yes, I am. I'm in love. Thank you. I mean, not to her, a different bitch, but I'm saying. I'm sorry, I, you're looking mad, ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> Got you. No, listen. Ladies, I'm joking. I don't want y'all to think bad of me. I'm joking. No, for real. My wife is Puerto Rican. I am joking. Okay, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I am not going to get cut. No, I'm not. No. Not again. Not after the third time. I'm not going to die. Married to a Latin woman, that's right. Love my Latin women. We got any Latin women out there? Latin women! Beautiful women, man. I actually met my wife at a Latin club. I don't know if y'all been to a Latin club. If you've never been, y'all need to go, black people. That's right. White people, you can go too. Oh, yeah. Everybody has a good time at a Latin club, but let me tell you how it works. Now, it's not like a bar where you can just buy a woman a drink and think you're going to get a phone number. You can't do that at a Latin club. If you want a phone number at a Latin club, you know what you got to know how to do? Dance! To Latin music. That's right. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, James, what if I don't know how to dance to Latin music? I got you. All you do is find the smoothest Latin dude in that club, and you do everything that he does. And I know you guys are like, how do I know who's a smooth Latin dude? That's easy. By the way, they walk. Every Latin dude has that same smooth walk. Like, sir, you walked in like me. We walk regular. We regular dudes. We walk left, right, left, right. That's how we walk. Not a smooth Latin dude. They got a kick step before they walk. You ever seen them? You ever seen that? What they do? And they don't even stop. They keep moving. They don't even stop. Hey, mm. Bite their lip. Mm. Hello. Always got on the same outfit, too. They wearing a long sleeve button-down shirt with the sleeves rolled up to their elbows. Shirt unbuttoned down to their navel. You can see every gold chain in his family. Yes, you can. He's wearing the tightest damn jeans you have ever seen. I mean, the jeans are so tight, he can't have kids no more. No, he can't. And for some reason, they always wearing white loafers like he is Pitbull, the rapper, right? But the thing about these dudes is they know how to work it. See, women love a man that can dance. You know why? Women think if you can dance, you can do other things pretty good. <laughs> Some of you women look like you ain't had a good dance partner in a while. I see you. <laughs> Some of y'all are electric sliding by yourself. Boogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Batteries is what I'm saying, yes. So I love seeing a Spanish dude dance in the club, but you gotta wait for the right moment for that dude to dance. You don't just dance in any song. You gotta wait for that infectious Latin beat to come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That. Yeah, there it is, brother. There you go. When that beat comes on, that dude will break it down. I don't even know what you call the dance, but he is like, Larry, what is that? That dude did that dance, and I swear to God, a bull ran through for no reason. I don't even know where he got the rose in his mouth. Just, yes. And here's the thing. The more that dude danced, the more excited the women got. And pretty soon, they were yelling out stuff I don't even understand. If you speak Spanish, what does this mean? 
had your smell. I'm going to tell you, that dude could dance, though. He danced his butt off. That dude danced so good, the women started throwing their bras and panties at him. Yeah, ma'am, he danced so good, I threw my bra and panty at him. You guys ready to have a good time tonight? Funny not famous! <laughs> I'm gonna need my bra back. Okay, anyway. <laughs> you guys ready? Let's have some energy for the first comedian coming to the stage. All the way from Palm Harbor, y'all give it up for Dorian Gay! I hit that genuine in here. Y'all make some noise for yourself. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. Y'all came here. Y'all didn't see Beyonce. Y'all came here. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. I, uh, my name is Dorian Gale. That's right. I am from Palm Bay, Florida. I, um, I didn't know like a lot of slang when I was younger. Like A lot of stuff messed me up like this right here. <laughs> right? Like Everybody knows what that means. That means you're too far away from somebody to say hello, so you give them a head nod, right? I was eight years old in this playground. This kid looked at me. He was like, yo, what's up, man? I said, hey, bro. <laughs> what? Kids in my street dressed up in Halloween. They, they, everybody would be Captain America. I had to be Captain African America, all right? <laughs> Green, yellow, and red was my color of the flag. Just saying, man, I was, I'm different. You know what I'm saying? When I was 10 years old, I was different, all right? I'm talking about big, big feet, skinny knees, bird chest, big hands, and an afro with a buck teeth, all right? I look like a black Big Bird, okay? That's what I look like. And I sounded different, too. Like, if Steve Urkel did the wrong theme song, that's what I sounded like, all right? I was like, now this is a story all about how. <laughs> like, that was me when I was younger. So my mother was like, well, you need to get in tune with your culture. We're going to sing you, you know, see your cousins and your sisters and brothers and, you know, black neighborhood and whatnot. So we sent me over there, play basketball, football. First thing I heard was little John, you know, yeah, y'all, we some head busters. We some head busters. We'll knock your hate out. We some head busters. Yeah, y'all. Right? <laughs> I tried to duplicate that, okay? I was like, we're the head busters. We are the head busters. We will knock those haters out unconsciously. That's how I was. It, I was really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and I know, like, I got teased a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, like my, my, my lips are ashy, so I had to explain to the white kids what ashy was, all right? Ashy is when a black person's skin is without moisture, it looks pale or flaky, and it appears to be white, all right? <laughs> this, one, this one kid in my class told me my lips are so white, they were segregated from the rest of my face. And I was like, how was that even possible? Civil rights is just saying... <laughs> That's how it was, man. I was, I was very different. I was very different, man. I try to play sports. You know, I'd be in the weight room. Kids be like, how much you bench the whole game? I don't ever play, okay? That's how it was <laughs> when I was in there. But the most interesting thing to me is not like, like, I get it. I understand sports, but from a different perspective. The most entertaining thing to me is the commentary, all right? When I can look at Shannon, Shannon Sharp, Skip Bayless, Shaquille O'Neal, and Stephanie Smith talk about barbecue chicken for 30 minutes, it is the most interesting thing ever because Stefan's up there and he's very passionate. He's like, well, you know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about barbecue chicken. I put the adobo seasoning. I put the garlic salt. I put the paprika. I put the blackened pepper with the cayenne pepper. <laughs> Mama, there goes that man, barbecue chicken, right? <laughs> Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp, he comes in there. Skip, skip, first of all, skip. Let me tell you something, skip. Skip, skip, LeBron is a goat, skip. I feel like LeBron is a goat, skip. You need to come to my cookout, skip, because he ain't got no seasoning, skip. Get you some seasoning, skip. I'm going to put my do-rag on and a cigar in my mouth and walk away, skip. Not going to do this today, skip. Charles Barkley come in there. You know what, Kenny, I don't like the way you've been treating me. And just because you just got more money, you're on a halftime show, and you're doing all these big old things. I don't like the way you've been treated. Stephen comes in. Well, it didn't matter when Michael Jordan beat you seven times in the NBA playoffs. And then Shaq is on the other end of the table, and Shaq is just sitting there. It doesn't matter what I do if I like it. I love it if I like it. I don't care if I like it. 24 points, 7 points. Papa John's pizza, onions, pickles, tomatoes. I like it. I like it. I'm sick. I'm big when I walk. It's heavy. I know. You like it. Same, man. I, I, 
I'm just saying, man. I was watching my favorite com uh, my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, <laughs> comedy channel, uh, Fox News, and uh, there's a story on there. Like they're talking about the Will Smith situation, right? People know about the Will Smith situation, Red Table Talk, right? I didn't want to see my favorite idol, you know, all in tears. You know, I'm used to a, oh, yeah, you know, Carlton and Ashley. I'm used to that, Will Smith, all right? He's had to change the name of his songs now. I heard the French Prince of Bel-Air. It didn't sound the same. He was like, now this is the story all about how my wife got flipped, turned upside down. I said, wow, okay. That's what we're doing. <laughs> The same, man, it's not always the comedians, you know what I'm saying? It's not always us, you know, saying stuff, you know what I mean? It's, it's different, you know what I'm saying? There's differences to it, you know? And, and my dad would come watch me in the sport games, you know what I'm saying? My dad's loud, Jamaican, you know, he's, he's very loud. Jamaicans are loud with their humor, you know what I'm saying? So I invite my dad to the game, right? He's in the stands, and you know what your parent, you know that they have a distinctive sound, whether their keys jingle or whether their voice is speaking, you know that's your mama and your daddy, right? So <laughs> the referee was like, white, one, blue, zero, <laughs> My dad, he got off the bleachers. Why you want to test me, brethren? Why you want to test me, referee? My boy, flagrant foul. Why you want to test me, right? <laughs> After the game, I, uh, my dad, his English is very good. He said, son, I came out. I supported you. I said, dad, I was on the bench the entire time. I did not play. Someone else's son got your support. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's how it was, man. That's how it was, man. And, and you know, it's just, you know, being patient. You know what I mean? You got to be patient with your parents and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to be patient with it, you know. I, um, I, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? I was watching my favorite comedy channel, Fox News, and uh, <laughs> there's a story on there that was uh, talking about LGBTQ history, and I think that's gay. But the better thing... <laughs> It's still better than joining a hate group. I'm gonna tell you, it's still better than joining a hate group because you don't get any like you don't get any benefits when you join the KKK, right? There's no benefits when you join the Ku Klux Klan, which is why they have to become politicians in the daytime to get the benefits that they want. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm in a. Uh, I'm in a. Relationships, there's ways couples in here, you know what I'm saying? When I was single, I was doing things I never did before, like being happy. And, um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, it's good though, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, first girl I saw, you know what I'm saying? I was younger, I was like 10 years old, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to talk to girls at a young age. We all got a corny line, all guys got a corny line, you know what I'm saying? Or you run through my mind all day. We all got something corny that we say, you know, at first. So I went to the older guys, the older guys are like, Dorian, you know, these girls think that you're immature at the time. Say something that they're not going to catch. So I looked at this girl, you know what I'm saying, on a field trip, and she was like, hey. I said, hi. <laughs> right? But I didn't want to be myself, so I decided to pick my, one of my favorite impressions, and I would decide to be Notorious B.I.G. She was like, huh. I was like, oh, baby, baby. <laughs> To so all the ladies in the place with style and grace, allow me to lace these lyrical in your uh, who rock grooves and make moves with all the mobbies. The back of the club, sipping my wet is where you find me. The back of the club, knocking my crew behind me. She gave me the number. That's what happened. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, listen, listen, man, I, I love comedy. I want to tour all over the world one day because I work at this place called McDonald's and, uh, <laughs> It's, a, uh, it's different because I, I used to work at Chick-fil-A, right? I used to be in the, I used to work, be in the cow suit, so I know what it feels like to be mixed. I, um, but they said, Dorian, you talk too much. Let's put you up front. Talk to the customers. So I go up to the front counter, and I'm doing my favorite celebrity impressions, right? I do Gilbert Godfrey. It says here you have two spicy chicken sandwiches and three large sweet teas, right? <laughs> I, I do Tracy Morgan. He's not even talking about the order. You know, they circumcise me a poor form. That's why I walk different. Right? And then I do Chris Tucker, the new improved. Hey, man, listen, man. It's Friday. You ain't got no job. Get you a number two, man. I don't cuss no more. I'm a Christian now. Right? They, I, they put me at McDonald's. I said, don't put me on the headset. I'm going to do my favorite ones. They put me on the headset. I did, I did Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, and Chris Rock. Right? I got on the headset. I said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to McDonald's. We have Big Macs and fish fillets, two for five, boo-boo. If you give me an extra dollar, I'll give you some of my perm juice. 
right? Kevin Hart took the next customer. First of all, okay, people, I'm sitting here, two Big Macs, no sauce. Swear to God, oh, we forgot the ketchup. Oh my God, no, oh, oh no. <laughs> Let me get my general manager, Chris Rock, to come in here. Chris, come in here. I mean, what is going on, okay? You got fish fillets in the wrong bun, coffee beans in the ceiling, ice cream machine still broken. Give these people their money back, right? And, and, right? Eddie Murphy was a, he was an interesting customer. He was sitting there laughing. <laughs> yes, you know, I want my, I want my Big Mac and your fries too. <laughs> right? And then Bernie Mac, he's an angry customer. He come in, let me tell you something. America, you see if I come in here one more time, I got my Big Mac extra fries, I can pick up the phone. You know what's going on. You see these kids. You see I got kids. Two, four, and six. If I come back in here, I ain't got my Big Mac extra fries, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to bust your head to the white meat. Now you have a nice day. My name is Dorian Gale. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it, man. Thank y'all so much. One more time, get up for Jordan Gale! Wrong way. That boy was funny. That boy dressed like a Republican, but he was funny. That boy, he just got back from the Capitol building. All right. Y'all ready for your next comedian of the night? He makes his way from Atlanta, Georgia. Y'all give it up for a good friend of mine, Marvin Lee. How y'all doing? Yeah. Man, man, thank you guys for coming out here to Afro TV. I'm glad I'm here, man, because I barely made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> So I might as well get this over with right now. A lot of times people ask me about my family background, and I'll tell you. I'm black, American Indian, and Irish. Yeah. So if you want to believe a bunch of stereotypes, what does that mean? I'm a raging alcoholic who can't hold my liquor while I sit around all day drinking gin and juice. <laughs> people kill me, though. They, when we start talking about stereotypes, people be killing me. Like, some people still think if a black and white person get together, you're going to get some stereotype genetic throwback of both groups. I mean, realistically, what's the worst thing you could possibly get? A big redneck with a jerry curl. <laughs> Mouth just full of gold teeth as he's spitting, chewing tobacco. And, and you know he's going to grow up and be the biggest pimp in the trailer park. <laughs> Driving around in a big pink Cadillac with a gun rack in the back of it. and Marrying his first cousin. And Pimping her out for a set of mud flaps and a watermelon. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I can't help it. If you want to think like this, cool, let's just roll with it. Because actually with me, you're going to get the best of both worlds. Because standing before you is a six-foot-two, curly-haired, green-eyed, basketball-slamming, golf-land, hockey-loving, government, cheese-eating, malt liquor-drinking, bare metal loving hip-hop-rapping brothers hung well, got great credit, and likes to use his tongue. <laughs> It amazes me how many of y'all think that last part is a joke. <laughs> Man, uh, a lot of times though, people be asking me about, well, what was it like, you know, growing up like this, especially growing up in the South? I'm like, oh, I, everything seemed normal to me up until a family cookout when both sides of my family showed up. <laughs> oh yeah, that was jacked up. When you got one side of your family bringing these little finger sandwiches and gray poupon. And then the other side of my family, I'm bringing chitlins and collard greens. <laughs> and I didn't even know white people know how to make chitlins and collard greens. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad y'all got that joke. <laughs> well, people be killing me, man. It's just amazing. People get all tied up with all this stuff. And I'm like, all right. So I actually went out to L.A. And while I was doing the show, I was out there trying to get an agent. And I was doing the show, and they were loving it. And so these people from NBC come up to me, and they said, well, Marvin, we really like your show. But the problem is, Marvin Lee doesn't sound black, American Indian, or Irish, and we think you need to change your name to something that expresses your family background. 
What the hell am I going to change my name to? Freaking Tyrone Cloudfeather McNally? <laughs> but sometimes oh, it works out for me, man. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I have to admit, I've used that to my advantage because one time I was just going along and I was having a show and I was in, I was headed to Florida over at the Panhandle, which we call Laura, Alabama. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm just driving along, right? And I'm minding my business and I look up and I see these police sirens flashing and I got so scared I could feel a pee running down my leg. Wait a minute. I've been doing the speed limit. My tag is current. I ain't got no more warrants. There is no reason. <laughs> I paid all that. Up. I said, there's no reason why he should be pulling me over. I'm like, I know why he's doing it. He pulling me over because I'm black. And I was getting mad, being profiled and everything. And I got angry and everything. And I started realizing something. I'm like, look, I've been telling everybody about don't judge somebody. And here I am judging this cop about pulling me over. And I'm like, he might not be pulling me over because he's profiling me. He might be a decent individual. No, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm sitting there on the side of the road, and I'm, like, yeah, I'm just getting mad. And he gets out in the car, and I'm standing there, right? And I'm like just freaking out. And he let me know from the very beginning that he didn't want my type of people in that town. Because he literally said, we don't want your type of people in this here town. And so he got me on the side of the road and everything. I know I know I doing it. He pulled me over because I'm black. I know I doing it. I was getting mad. Turns out I was wrong. Turns out he didn't pull me over because he thought I was black. He pulled me over because he thought I was Puerto Rican. <laughs> 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 oh, and he's speaking some good old boy Spanglish to me and everything. He said, look here there, El Muchacho there. <laughs> Taco Bell Senor Reader or whatever. <laughs> Now, we can't have you in this here town. We got all of the lawn care and construction we could possibly do. And I'm like, what? And I start freaking out. I'm like, man, I got to do something about this because this guy's like tripping and everything. I'm like, man, I got to figure out a way out of this. And then I'm like, man, this guy's got a problem with certain minorities, and I got to figure a way out of this. And then I start thinking about it. I'm like, all I got to do is come up with some kind of group that this guy couldn't possibly have a problem with. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? Are there any groups in America that nobody has a problem with? And I'm sitting there freaking out, right? And then I stood there, and then it dawned on me. And I looked at the officer, and I'm like, officer, look, um, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I ain't no Puerto Rican, and I ain't black. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Come here. Look, uh, don't tell nobody, but uh, I'm an Eskimo. <laughs> Think about it. You ain't never heard nobody got a problem with Eskimos. <laughs> You've never heard anybody go, oh, hell, the Eskimos taking all the good jobs here in America. <laughs> You've never seen a guy looking out his window and go, oh, hell, the Eskimos moving in next door. I'm going to have seals and blubber all around the neighborhood. I ain't going to never sell this house. <laughs> you have never seen any guy walking along with his wife and say, Honey, quick, hold your purse. Here comes an Eskimo. <laughs> Turns out I was right. Man actually liked Eskimos because he looked at me and go, You're a what? <laughs> I'm an Eskimo, man. Well, hell, we like you people. <laughs> yeah, y'all make one hell of an ice cream sandwich, that's for sure. <laughs> Man, people kill me with this kind of stuff. Like, I'm going to tell you something I didn't get a chance. Like, I am not a politically correct comic. I can tell you that right now. I believe in treating everybody and respecting everybody, but I'm not a politically correct comic because I can tell you, being politically correct cost me $35,000. Yes. Because a couple years back, I actually had an audition, and I got this audition for Church's Fried Chicken. And I walked into the audition, and I had a little bitty piece of chicken, and I held it up. And all I had to do is go, Church's, got to love it. And they said, we love that. Can you do it again? I held it. Church's, got to love it. 
they loved it. Came back to me and everything. They said, yeah, Marvin, you are a gold guy. And then because I looked the way I looked, they said, what we're going to do is we're going to dub your voice in Spanish and pay you another $15,000 on top of that because it'd be cheaper to dub your voice than to actually sit there and reshoot another commercial. So I'm looking at 50 k deep. Yeah. Then they called me a few days later, and my agent goes, Marvin, um, uh, you didn't get the commercial. Yeah. I said, but they love me. He said, yeah, they did. They loved you, but see, the problem is they talk to their attorneys and they talk to the PR people, and the issue is, it's, it's just not, they will not allow a black person to eat chicken on television because it's politically incorrect. But you sell chicken! <laughs> I said, yeah, but it's just not politically correct to show a black man eating fried chicken on TV. I dare you, you look at any chicken commercial on TV, black people, they will buy it, they can pull it out of a box or a bucket, they can walk up to the counter, but they won't let a black person eat chicken. Man, for $35,000, I would have sat there and sucked the marrow out of that chicken bone. <laughs> Straight up. Then I would have turned around and followed it with a whole round of watermelon and just ate it. Like that. And then I would have washed the whole thing down with a big old bottle of malt liquor, 40 ounce. And right when I didn't embarrass everybody, I'd be standing there singing, Is you is or is you ain't my baby. Straight up. We got women out here. That's real nice. Uh, I, I like seeing women like this. Uh, I, after the show, people are like, what do you want to hang out? And I'm going to tell you guys. Uh, the biggest thing I always get complaints about women, they say, well, you don't spend no quality time. Is that true, lady? Like you said, me, I want men to spend more quality time. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to explain something to you. Quality time for men involves just a few things. Sex, <laughs> violence, cars, sports, and beer. That's straight up. So ladies, if you want to see a bunch of men really enjoying quality time, you better get a bunch of naked women with machine guns, racing Corvettes for the national championship sponsored by Budweiser. <laughs> I'm my Marvin. Thank you guys for coming up. One more time, let them hear it. Marvin Lee, everybody, yeah. <laughs> I can't shake you too much, not in these pants. No, I can't. <laughs> Ring my underwear out. Okay, anyway. Y'all ready to keep the show gunning? Y'all ready? Put it out, famous. Next comedian coming to the stage is repping Tampa, Florida. Y'all give it up for Barack Ahmed. Hey, hey, good evening, how y'all doing? Yeah. All right, all right. I know when he said Barack, I mean, y'all probably was expecting like an Arab with a chain of gas stations or something. <laughs> but surprise, you got me. <laughs> but I want to tell you the truth. I know y'all looking at me, you think I'm probably like black or African or something, but I'm not. Um, actually black and Jewish. Um, from Fort Lauderdale, USA. My mom is black. Uh, the landlord was Jewish. My mom couldn't pay the rent a couple months, <laughs> so she... <laughs> She did what she had to do, you know? <laughs> Don't judge us. My mama had her priorities in order, you hear me? <laughs> it was all fun and games until she said she wanted to live for Christ and got her life right. Then the landlord kicked us out. Yeah, it was an eviction notice. All our stuff was on the street. My mama told me it was a garage sale. I was like, oh, that's nice. That's smart. We're going to sell all our stuff to pay for rent. That's cool. I like that. I like that. But I did. I grew up in a different time, though. I'm an 80s baby. Any 80s babies in the building? 80s babies, 70s babies, 70s. 60s, in the 60s babies. Y'all looking good. Okay, well, we're just going to see really, real quick. Um, 50s babies, in the 50s babies? Okay, it's, okay. All right, up front. Up front, okay. All right. There was a couple in here, so real quick, we're just going to see because we're going to keep going. I don't want to see. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and if 40s babies, if you in here, 
Wake up, I know you're back there asleep. Go on there. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, because y'all understand life change after a certain age, right? My body ain't the same no more. My body changed, you know, and I'm just, I just barely passed 40. My life ain't the same no more. I can't eat a bowl of cereal and leave the house right away in the morning. I eat a bowl of, I eat a, I eat a, I eat a bowl of Raisin Bran. I got to wait 30, 45 minutes before I leave. I mess around to get in the car and sneeze, mess up my whole outfit in the car. I planned on wearing this all day, too. This is terrible. Life is different. You just can't eat the same stuff no more. My body didn't give me no warning. My body didn't give me no warning. My body just started changing for no reason. I found out I was just standing and minding my business and my, my knee just said, fall down right now. <laughs> you, ever just been, <laughs> you ever just been standing there and your legs decide they had enough? <laughs> I know I ain't the only one. I'm just standing there chilling. My knee said, this is a good spot to just fall down. Just, Walking through the house and my, my ankle just said, hell, I'm fractured for no reason. Just... <laughs> I don't get it. You ever went to sleep feeling perfectly fine? You ain't okay. You wake up in the morning, you got injuries you didn't even know you had. You just... <laughs> Life-changing injuries, too. You sitting on the edge of the bed trying to warm up like an old Buick Regal. You just... <laughs> contemplating life, you know what I mean? <laughs> my body just ain't the same no more, man. My body really let me know, you know, that I was getting a little older. I messed around and uh, went to Sam's Club. Ooh, y'all know about Sam's Club? You can go there and get full for free. You just got to know how to do it right. <laughs> you ain't even got to pay for that. You go there for lunch and just walk around the circle. <laughs> I'm in the... I'm in that grocery shopping with my wife, and we get to the little frozen food section, and the man had uh, Breyer's butter pecan ice cream. Ooh, my favorite. I didn't say pralines and cream. I said butter pecan. I walked around that station like I had never been there before. I came around the first time, went around the corner, took my sweat off, and came back. Because <laughs> you know they say you can only get <laughs> I took my sweat off. I said, oh, you say these are locally harvested nuts. These are nice. <laughs> I had like six shots of the little Briar's buttercream. <laughs> I got the aisle 13. My stomach asked me a question. <laughs> my stomach stopped me dead in my tracks. My stomach said, <laughs> That's when my walk with the Lord got for real. You ever been in a strange Sam's Club you never been to before? You trying to find a way to the bathroom, but you gotta walk without bending your knees. You gotta. <laughs> I had to send a prayer up. I sent the prayer up. I said, "Oh heavenly Father, I, I swear, because if you if you bend your knees, chunk of iced tea all in your socks, just." <laughs> I'm walking, trying not to bend my knees, and I thought somebody was following me. I just heard. I had to look back. Who's there? <laughs> Your body don't give you no warning, you know? <laughs> no warning. No warning whatsoever. I left tracks and everything. I didn't know. It was... <laughs> Life change after a certain age, it do. You ever mess around and drop something and bend down to pick it up too fast? You come up and almost pass out. You get to a certain age, you realize you drop them keys in the middle of the floor, you'll walk past them till Monday, won't you? Yeah. I don't need them. I'll, I'll get them when it's time to go to work. <laughs> you got to be fully committed. 
got to be fully committed. When you drop something, you've been down to pick it up. You got to get, you got to prepare yourself at a certain age. You got to get you one of these. You got to get your, your legs like shoulder length apart. And then when you go down to get it, you got to send up a prayer just in case you go down, but you don't come back up. And when you go down, ah! <laughs> Change after a certain age. Like, I realize how much textures mean to me now. Like, my wife turned me on to Egyptian cotton. God bless her. We've been together almost 19 years. Yeah. Y'all understand, married people in the building. Y'all married? Make some noise, married people? Okay. I could tell the married men, you know our wife start to dress us after a certain age. She, she dressed us a certain way so don't no other woman look at us. You know what I mean? Babe, I got your outfit laid out for you on the bed. <laughs> We've been together for a while. I've, and I found out the key to longevity. Like, at our age, you don't see people together that long no more. People starting to break up for anything now. Oh, you put milk in the bowl before the cereal? Who raised you? I can't do this. It is, and we get into little arguments every now and then too. And you know, I found out what really any any newly newly married couples, I'm gonna give you something to say that'll just smooth the argument right on over. Fellas, when your your woman is mad at you and you wanna just end the argument where you can go and mind your business, I found out the one phrase. You just gotta tell her, you know what? That's why your mama didn't raise you right and just leave. <laughs> I'm messing with you, I'm messing with you. Don't try that, I'm messing with you. See, so you have a U-Haul backed up to the house for no time. <laughs> but I found out that we discovered that we refused to go to bed angry at each other. We said, you know what, we're not going to go to bed angry. We talk it out, we're not going to go to sleep angry. Y'all pray for me, we ain't been asleep since Tuesday. <laughs> I'm tired right now. I'm about to. <laughs> we ain't slept since Tuesday. I'm tired right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to go backstage and take me a power nap right now. Y'all don't tell her. <laughs> uh, well, that's my time. Now that all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to go ahead and <laughs> bring the host back up. <laughs> No, I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for laughing so much. My name is Barack Ahmed. Y'all have a good night. One more time, get up for Barack Ahmed. Funny. That is the blackest damn name. That brother's name is Barack. Amen. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> One more time, get up for Barack on, oh, man. That is a black name. You guys ready for your final comedian tonight? Funny not famous. He is also repping Tampa Bay, Florida. Y'all give it up for Will Speed. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, y'all can do better than that. I done squeezed up in these tight pants. Y'all gonna give it up tonight? Yeah. Took me 30 minutes in City Trends to find these pants. And y'all, I know they kind of tight, but they wasn't as tight when I bought them, you know. They was a size 42 when I bought them, but I washed them and they turned to a 16 Husky. I don't... Uh, listen, y'all looking at a brand new wheel speed. I done, over the past year, I done lost 150 pounds. Y'all see that side view? Yeah, yeah. But I ain't losing for the right reasons. I lost it because my food stamp connect had moved back to Atlanta. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I went up in Publix and I didn't know them prices was like that. Like. I got a half a bag of grapes, and that lady told me $10.92. I said, no, ma'am, I got some other stuff to get. I walked around that store and ate every grape off that vine. (laughs) 
I do, I do. And don't judge me now. Don't judge me because I, I don't get my fruit from nowhere but public because the fruit at Walmart look used, don't it? The fruit at Walmart look like it been here before, don't it? And then they try to put them little fly traps up. The flies just be flying around the fruit. The flies don't even land on the fruit. They just be flying. It look like it been used before, don't it? Ain't only one. It do. But I done lost this weight. I feel great. I feel good. Yo, this is the first time in my 40 years I can look down and see my whole wee-wee. <laughs> Got a little too deep, huh? Got a little too deep? Okay. <laughs> but I went to, I, you know, I, I went to the hospital and the doctor told me, he said, uh, Will, you need to change your, your life. You know, I went in, I almost died. I was in ICU for three weeks. My glucose, my, my glucose was 987. <laughs> My A1C was like 16.4. The chart stopped at 14. He said, you need to change your life. I said, you right. Because I got a gay cousin that ain't got that much sugar in him. <laughs> he was standing at the door telling us something. I knew you was sweet. I said, wrong sugar. Wrong sugar. <laughs> Sweet and low, I'm splendor. I ain't. <laughs> Need y'all judging me. Listen, it's 2023. There's some things that we need to stop doing. Like inviting me over to your house and tell me to take off my shoes and your carpet already dirty. <laughs> There's some things we need to stop doing as black people. I go in my homeboy house. I said, man, what, what's up? He said, we just had a baby take his shoes off. I looked at his carpet. I said, what for? <laughs> if I take off my shoes to walk on your carpet, that means I'm going to take off my socks to walk in my shoes. I don't want to be here that bad. I just leave. <laughs> I come back. We can sit out on the patio. <laughs> I try to give him grace, you know. I try to give him grace because he stutter real bad. You know, anybody got that homeboy that stutter real bad? How come people that stutter can't get that word out so they finish the sentence with a whole nother word? I called him. I said, hey, man, how you doing? He said, man, I'm so, 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 I'm so, 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 I'm tired. I said, man, what's got you so tired? He said, I was a whoop, 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 I was a whoop, 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 I was a whoop, 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 I was on the job. Now, I'm not no rocket scientist, but I figured I got him figured out. The woo 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 mess you up. Why didn't you just start with, I was at the job? <laughs> I'm glad to be here with y'all tonight. This is a lifelong dream of mine. I've been doing this for 14 years, and, you know, this is the first show. They fed us before we got out here, you know? <laughs> I'm, I already made me a to-go plate, you know. <laughs> but I told my mama I was going to be a comedian. I said, Mama, you ain't going to believe this. Your baby boy, a comedian. I said, she said, baby, I just knew it. When you was born, I was telling you, Wayne Vaughn, you was going to be a comedian. I said, well, Mama, how did you know all them years ago I was going to be a comedian? She said, well, baby, your daddy was a joke. <laughs> Mm. 
back to my homeboy that stuttered. I just had to throw that out there. <laughs> he called me the other day, and I kept hanging up the phone in his face. Because I thought somebody was playing on my phone. <laughs> Hello? I hung up the phone. I thought somebody was playing on my phone. He called me again. Hello? <laughs> hung up the phone again. He sent me a text message. He said, it's me. Answer the phone. I said, I did. I told him, I said, you need to start your hello when you press send. <laughs> so by the time I answer... Hello. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Just not going to let my friends suffer. Help me back. You know, in the black community, it's customary that when you whoop your child, yes, white people, I said whoop your child. And with every lick you give that child, it comes with a word, correct? When my mama whooped me, I knew exactly what I did. I could not dispute that butt whooping. Didn't I tell you to clean your room? Yeah, you sure did. You sure, you sure did. I remember. I deserve this. I deserve this. Remember? Y'all, my uncle babysitted me one time, and he tried to whoop me, and he stuttered real, real bad. <laughs> that joker hit me 32 times on didn't I? <laughs> he grabbed the bell. He was like, I said, wait a minute. I'm not going to be able to dress out for P.E. tomorrow. Now, you've been whooping me for 14 minutes, and I don't even know what I've done. Now, you're going to have to beat me in Braille, because this is some bull. I don't need y'all judgment right now. And me being who I am, I told that joke at a show one night, and he was there. I looked him dead in the face the whole time I did that joke. Just looking at him. After the show, he waited till everybody shook my hand and, you know, walked on by and he walked up to me. He looked me dead in my face. He said, nephew! That was real. That was real. That was real. That was messed up. Hey, thank y'all for having me up to me at real speed. Thank y'all so much. One more time, let him hear Will Speed! Gotta give it up for all the comments you saw tonight on Funny Now Famous! We're gonna bring back to the stage Dorian Gale! Come on, Dorian! Dorian Gale! Marvin Lee! And Barack Ahmed! Thank you guys for supporting Funny Not Famous on behalf of Afro. We love you. Good night.